Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. It is the 23rd of July. 23rd of July, yeah. I've lost the number of episodes though, so um, you'll have seen from the, uh, from the title of the episode, so let's not worry too much about that. How is everyone doing? I'm finished for the summer! Yes, I am so, so happy. This week, it's been one of those times where I've been so looking forward to finishing and getting all this stuff, stuff done and I've got loads of stuff done towards the towards September and yet we've come to Friday and I'm thinking I've still got this 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 and this to do and it, the, the last week you know it suddenly the, the time just went whoosh like that swept under it's been a super busy week I've taken my sick form out on a field trip um, we went to one of the local beaches and we did some field work looking at zonation on the rocky shoreline and I took them dolphin watching as well so we went in the boat um, and we saw dolphins we saw some amazing feeding behavior there was these two dolphins um, one slightly older one slightly younger and they were catching fish and they were flipping them up in the air and they were you could oh it was brilliant it was brilliant saw a lion's main jellyfish as well for the first time um, Pembrokeshire is about as far south as they come uh, and I've never actually seen one in the water. It's the longest animal on the planet. If you take into account the length of the tentacles, it's the longest animal on the planet. Um, and then yesterday we had the staff do, which was amazing. We had, uh, as a staff, we had formed a cricket team to play our local cricket team. That would be my daughter on Alexa. <laughs> so we played a local team cricket team. We had a barbecue and and apparently she'll have to wait. Hang on, two seconds. I have to say, she who must not be named, Alexa, drives me mad. Absolutely bonkers. I can't work out if my life is better with or without her. Um, I asked her to turn on one of Ness's lights earlier and she said, did you mean da 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 light? And I'm like, yes, that's why I said that. Anyway, <laughs> she drives me potty, absolutely potty. Where was I? We went on a field trip, I've done that bit. Then we went to the staff do, staff do. Yeah, so we formed a cricket team, we had a barbecue, it was great fun. There was a bit of a disco as well. Um, yeah, it was lovely. And then this morning I woke up, came downstairs and I pretty much parked my backside on the sofa all day. If my place on earth was defined by what I have done today, then I'm a goner. But anyway, I just think I just sat on the sofa most of the day just like staring into middle distance, <laughs> just kind of shell-shocked about it all. But I did get some good stitching in um, and I haven't had too bad a stitchy week. I've got one near finish, one start and finish and one new start that's not that far off a finish actually. So yeah, I've done quite a bit. Um, I did a competition last week to give away a sampler chart from Chrissy, finally a farm girl, and I'm gonna put a picture up there because I haven't got the uh, the sheet with me. And I have done the draw, and the winner was Maxwell Studio 19. So congratulations, if you can just drop me an email, my email address is down below, or contact me on Instagram, oops, or the table, then I will get your chart out to you. So congratulations. Right, let's have a look and see what else I've been doing. Oh, before I go on, this is the book that I was talking about last week. I had a couple of people ask about it because I couldn't remember the title of it. So I actually have the, the book and I have it on audiobook as well. And basically you can see from the, the side, the, the author just goes through the colours and literally tells you the story behind each of the colours. So when we're looking at the colours that Kathy Barrick has chosen for her blues, they're in, they're in here, so we can find out exactly how each of those colours got their names. So that is the book, it's called The Secret Lice of Colour by, I would say Cassia Sinclair, but I'm willing to be corrected. Right, on to stitching. So what have I done? My start and my finish. So I have been doing the 12 in 23 ornament cell. Now actually, I think, I am ahead of the game. I think I have done, not necessarily all 12, but I've certainly done more than one a month. So um, I think I've probably, yeah, I'm on course to finish. So this is the one I just that I chose, just because actually I was sitting down watching, what was I watching? It wasn't the tennis. Whatever came after the tennis on Sunday night, I, um, 
I'd found this while I was tidying up and I was like, oh, I love that design. I'm going to stitch that. So it's this one by, it's called Christmas Woodpecker by Panochka. Um, I've changed it slightly. This pattern here in the background is actually done in one strand of thread and this bit is done over two, obviously to give you some sort of depth. I decided once I'd stitched the woodpecker that I was actually just very happy with the woodpecker. Um, and I didn't want to stitch the background pattern. So I'm just gonna make him into a very thin little ornament. He stitched on some 32 count hogs bristle from Fox and Rabbit. I'm just gonna turn him into a little thin ornament with a beaded edge. Helen D has done a tutorial about doing a beaded edge. So I intend to avail myself of that tutorial and give him a little beaded edge. So I just thought he was so, so cute. So I think he's equally nice with or without the, the background, but I decided to leave him without. I just love this tree, this kind of silver birch tree that he's on is amazing. So that was my start and finish, just because, and it's a sulky conversion. Very simple red, white and black sulky conversion. Um, so yeah, I just, I just fancied it. This is my near finish. Now it's a near finish because all it needs is the back stitch. So it's the Santa portraits again, the Santa portraits again. Now I've had somebody ask, ask asking me how to get hold of these again. So they are in the November, December issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine 2011. Now there is a CD-ROM with all of the Just Cross Stitch magazines on for that time period. So I'm gonna find a picture of it and I'll put it up probably on that side, okay? Because that's the one you want. There's about three different Just Cross Stitch CD-ROMs depending on sort of which time frame um, you want the magazine from. So I will put a picture up of what it looks like and then all of the magazines are in PDF format on that, um, on that CD-ROM and you just print off whatever you want and there are loads, loads and loads of really good ones. So this is the stitching finished on my third Santa. So this is the stitching finished on the third Santa. I need to do the um, back stitch. bit of a weird one. I need to do I need to do the back stitch and then I need to frame him. Now it's my birthday on Friday. I'm gonna be spending some of my birthday driving back to the Cotswolds because the other weekend I am going to the Floss, Floss Friends retreat uh, up in Retford. So for the weekend and my goal is to get these Santas finished and framed before then. I'm not sure if I'm going to take them to a retreat or not. I might do. I might do. I have to look and see if they're having a little brag table because I don't normally take anything for brag tables, but I might be tempted to take these. So that is him all finished, apart from the back stitch. And then, so the only one I've got left now is this one in the bottom corner. Now I'm purposely not showing you the other two because the next time you'll see them is all together framed up. And this is the fourth one. They always look super freaky to put their eyes in. <laughs> I wish I'd just put a couple of little dots in the middle of the eyes. I should have got some little of those little uh, wobbly eyes, shouldn't I? Just stuck him on. So there he is. So that's probably a good bit more than 50% done, I would say. This one seems to go a little bit faster than some of the others because there's such a lot of beard on this one. Um, the hat's almost finished. I've got this another colour that sort of evens it up a little bit. And then there's this beard kind of coming out here and then he's equal on the other side. So these are the last two. Now, because I am going to be in Retford on Saturday night. My plan, my plan is to do a special edition floss tube that I can film on Thursday. And my plan, fingers crossed, is to have these all finished 
and framed by Thursday to show you because I've kind of got an, an inkling to do a floss tube about Santa portraits because I've got these ones done. I've got another one, which is a dimensions kit that I've done. I've also got a couple, I think two, if not three, Santa portraits sort of dimensions portraits. And I've got a few books, which have got some other fabulous Santa portraits in that I really want to do as well. Um, so that is my plan. We'll see. <laughs> I shouldn't, I, there's nothing much else I've got to do this week. Nothing much else I've got to do. And if I could have it all framed and ready to go by my birthday, then that would make me a very, very happy bunny. Very happy. Right, let me show you what else I've got. This isn't necessarily going to be as long as a normal episode um, because we had a bit of a good catch up last week. The freebie. This is from Pinker and Pumpkin Blogspot again. Such a good source of freebies. This is the latest one, I believe. Aunt Betty's at Blueberry Buckle Lane. And it's a shaker house. I'm gonna hold it back here. And I'll put a picture of it up here. The thing that got me was this border. And a lady called Karen sent me a little post and reminded me about this one that had come out. So thank you very much for that. So beautiful blues and greens love 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 you could always change the color of the house if you wanted to um melissa actually says in her instructions you know feel free have fun use whatever floss you like so it's by 75 by 75 so it's a great little stash buster but it's also a great little freebie for giveaways no not giveaways those things you do swaps swaps there we go. I thought that my uh, word language would come back when I finished school, but apparently it's just me. So there's that one. I have got a couple of stitchy kindness items. I've got a couple of little bits of haul and I've got an acquisition. I pinched it. So let's have a look and see what I, my stitchy kindness was. I had this lovely card from Sherry um, and she sent this to me for my birthday. So thank you so much for this Sherry, I love it. So this is the Celtic Santa's The Welsh Santa. Isn't it fabulous? I love this one. So thank you so much, thank you, thank you. I do love a Mill Hill and that was super kind of you to send it for my birthday, thank you. And then I had another Stitchy Kindness now, this is from Lisa, who is Lady Hazar, uh, and I'm sure there's a second part to the floss tube name. I'll link her down below. And I had seen this chart on her floss tube uh, that she's stitching it, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it to you when I saw it, because I just loved it. And she sent me a copy of it. So I'm gonna take it out of the the, the um, shiny paper and it's called Dasher and Dancer and it's by Hobby House Press so hence it's available in this only available in the States um, so she got me a copy and she sent it over for me so thank you so much Lisa um, it is 355 by 168 and her stitch of it is just absolutely amazing it is uh, antique lace linen and mulberry from the gentle art so it's kind of a brownie red I'm not quite sure what color I'm going to do it in yet but I have a feeling that this is going to be my birthday start provided I can organize myself with some thread and some fabric by then so I think this is going to be my birthday start I love me a Quaker like this now the question is will it stay to be framed or will it end up as another massive drum who knows but thank you so much I was so grateful for that pop it back in there keep it nice and tidy okay um, a couple of little bits that I got from a stash unload I've wanted this one for ages this is the Cricut Collection Autumn I love the months I love the seasons i love the ones that say halloween christmas i love them all 
I've never stitched one yet and this is the first one that I own so I'm really looking forward to having a little look through my box see what threads I've got see what I've got that I can that I can use and I'll show you right at the end I'll show you the fox and rabbit uh, fabric of the month that came this this month and you'll be astounded <laughs> you can guess it was exactly that color um, but anyway I will show you up later right towards the end in case you don't want to see it in case you haven't got yours yet because I've still got them they only came on when did they come yesterday they only came yesterday so uh, they're going out in the post on Monday so I'll show it right at the end in case you don't want to see it but I have given you a bit of a clue as to what colour it is but you get the neutrals anyway so it's a neutral <laughs> and then I got this one as well a haunting Halloween where you can make this nice piece here and then also I really liked this little scissor fob I thought that was great so I'm really looking forward to making that so there's that. I have also been gathering up bits and bobs for my stitchy box. Now this looks black but it's actually a very dark blue and I showed you the fabrics that I had chosen last week. They are both William Morris prints and I've basically been having a little look around to see what else I've got that might go inside the box when as I'm putting it together. So I'll give you a little insight as to what I've managed to scavenge from around my house. Little bits and bobs. So my first issue, I guess, is it's got this name printed on the top. That is not my name. I don't want that there. So I had a little pack, whoops, of these mini embroidery hoop frames. So all I've done is I've mounted a piece of the William Morris fabric in it and I am going to let's just tuck it in. I haven't done it yet, it's all a bit too much at the back. And I'm gonna stick that on the top there because I think that looks nice. I like the idea that it shows that it's kind of a stitchy box. So that was the first thing I decided. I then thought, what else have I got that's kind of William Morrissey could go with it? So I thought about making a pin, a long pin. And I managed to find, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them that well, those three beads. Those three beads, I thought, went really well with that fabric. Oh, I don't know if you can see without me throwing them everywhere. So I'm gonna do something with those three beads. Let's put them back in the box. I also have, and I haven't bought them, some William Morris postcards that I got in a little box of William Morris um, postcards. You can buy them from Amazon to get a hundred of them. So I'm going to make some thread drops with those. So that would also go in there. These little mother of pearl bird thread winders came from the Patchwork Rabbit Christmas Advent Calendar this year. So I've got three of them. They're Kelmscott design ones. So I shall be putting those in because they remind me of the little bird on the strawberry thief. I've got a bit of thread bling that I made, ring bling, don't look that up, um, which has actually got the strawberry thief on it. I just happen to have this. I, I've made a few William Morris um, ring blings. So I'm going to find a ring for that and that shall be in their box as well. And I also found that I had these two ceramic buttons. Now, I know exactly where I got these from. I got these from Highclere Castle, which is otherwise known as Downton Abbey. I've been there three times, I think. I've never watched an episode of Downton Abbey. I've seen the film, but I've never watched an episode of Downton Abbey. I've always been with friends who like it. And I like the building, it's great. Um, it's got an exhibition all about um, Egypt down in the bottom because it's the family home of Lord Carnarvon uh, who discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun with Howard Carter. So I found those. They're not actually William Morris buttons, they're, they're sort of clay buttons, but they reminded me of the colours and the patterns. So that's some of the things that I'm going to put into my box. I just need to get around to making it. I think that would be lovely. 
I also picked up some of these beautiful buttons. No, nope, they're not buttons, they're beads from eBay. I think, yeah, I think it's eBay. Excuse the wrinkling. Now I've got four of these. I'm gonna save two to make into earrings and two I'm gonna make into stitching pins for the top of drums. But they are these amazing lamp work beads. I think that's focusing. Whoa! <laughs> In which Michelle nearly falls completely off the stool whilst pushing the chair apart. There we go, let's try that one. So yeah, they're all four the same. So two I'm gonna make into earrings and two I'm gonna make into stitchy pins. Got the old heart race in there a minute. Right, this is my other thing that I acquired. Now, every year in our school, we have something called the big clean. And basically for a day, the pupils help us to clean. The school gets in skips, confidential waste skips, recycling, the lot. And it's just a case of you literally taking it out of your room, dumping it outside your front door of your room and there's like a team of, of children that will come around and take it to a skip and get rid of it for you. So it's a massively, massively great day and we all really like the big clean because this stuff just accumulates. It just accumulates as a teacher. And so to this time I got one of the, the students to go through my collection of test tube holders. Now I have quite a lot of test tube holders, probably too many. So once I distributed the rest of them back around the department as to the people who didn't have test tube holders, I've still got a lot. So instead of throwing this one in the skip, I decided to bring this one home. Because this one's a reasonably old one, actually. Now it needs a bit of a clean, admittedly. There is all sorts of fluff and dust and randomness. This peg is gonna come out, so it won't have any pegs in it. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, I don't really want to put that in the skip, but I don't know what to do with it. It's got to be a use. And then I counted the pegs. There are 12, 12 holes for 12 test tubes. For those of you wondering, that's a boiling tube hole, that's a test tube hole. But there are 10 of them, uh, 12 of them. And so I thought, I know exactly what I'm going to do with them. So Prairie Schooler does a chart or a couple of charts which have the 12 days of Christmas in Christmas tree form. So I shall make the 12 days of Christmas in Christmas tree form, put them onto dowels, and I shall stick one in each of my holes of my test tube. It will look different by the time I've given it a bit of a brush and a wax and removed that funny peg. It'll look great and it'll sit just on my mantelpiece with my Christmas trees from the 12 days of Christmas. That's the plan. How quickly it will happen is another story. And lastly, before I go, I will show you the Fox and Rabbit fabric of the month. If you want to see it, if you don't, if you're waiting for yours in the post, then it will be on its way on Monday. Like I said, they only arrived on Friday. So this one is called Latte. There we go. This one's called the Latte. And you can see why I was quite, uh, it was quite a coincidence. I think I wanna do this on bigger than 36 count though. I think I probably wanna do 32 so I can use two strands and get the real bright colors, but it was such a such a coincidence. Mind you, I could change it into sulkies and just use one strand. Possibilities. Possibilities are endless, as always. Anyway, I shall see you next week, but possibly not in the normal format. Although the mood might strike me and I might do a little floss tube in my hotel room on Saturday night. You never know. It depends how tired I am. But other than that, other than that, it will be a Christmas... Santa portrait special, hopefully with my finished Santa portraits. I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers.